All right, let's go, go ahead and look at our restrictions before we start. Okay, so right here, X would have to be greater than, because we can't take the log of zero either. Can't take the log of so go greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so restriction here, X has got to be not greater than or equal to, sorry, greater than zero, because it can't, we can't plug in a zero. Here, X has got to be greater than four. Four minus four gives me that zero. And here, X has got to be greater than negative six. Okay, so overall there, think about that for a minute. Let's do a number line right here. Here's negative six, here's zero, here's four. My first restriction says it's got to be bigger than negative six. This restriction says it's got to be greater than negative four. This has got to be greater than zero. So overall, my final answer has to be what? Greater than four, okay? So really that's what I'm looking for because I've got three different scenarios, but to fit all of them, it's gotta be greater than four. Okay, all right, just something to think about. Being able to logically think through things like that's gonna help, especially next year when we start <clears throat> expecting you to like apply the math and, and apply more than one thing at one time. All right, so what's the first log property that you see that we could do? What's the first log property that you see that we could do? We do, we do jump the frogs, we compress logs. We don't wanna expand because we're trying to get this as simple as possible. All right, is there some compression that I can do somewhere? Sam, where's my compression at? Yep, over here on this left-hand side, I'm adding a couple of logs, okay? So I'm gonna use my log rules. I'm gonna compress on that left-hand side. I'm gonna make it into a single log. So natural log of an X times an X minus four. All right, and if you want those square brackets around there, that's fine. All right, on the right-hand side, I'm not gonna do anything to that. Now I've got a log on both sides of the equation with the same base. Okay, so I've got one more. I can do what? I can cross out the logs. Next step, okay, so that's a, it's a property. It's a, it's a thing that we can do to solve our equations. All right, we get down to there. Now we've got an x times an x minus four, and we've got an x plus six. Okay, so at this point, hopefully from this point on, you should be fine. The only new stuff we're doing is applying those log rules. All right, so this will be an x squared minus a four x. So again, I have another quadratic. We gotta be good at solving our quadratics. I want that leading coefficient in front of that x squared to be positive. All right, so that means I'm gonna move everything over to the left. So I'm going to minus the x and minus the six from both sides. All right, showing a little bit more steps there. X squared minus 5X minus 6. All right, and then again, we always hope and want this to factor. All right, if it doesn't factor, though, you can go to quadratic formula. Okay, so I think 6 and, six and 1, 6 and 1, 6 and 1 is going to work. If I have a 6 and a 1, I want the middle term to be negative. So 6 got to be negative, 1's got to be positive in order to subtract, right? Don't let me make a mistake. X equals negative one, X equals six. All right, do I have to throw one of them out? Yeah, that's actually gonna happen quite a bit. X equals six. If I'm using set notation, set brackets around the six. All right, it's not always going to happen, but a lot of times it's going to happen or we're gonna have to throw something out. 